and the explosion is at the start of something or the end of something how do you it, it, what's interesting is that it but obviously there are a lot of things a lot of energy energy or boundlessness is there in the meeting but the interesting thing is and with the residentials and so on is that quite often that explosion takes place afterwards so they get back to their normal environment and something happens yeah we talk to a lot of people that this is happening to and you know quite often it's uh, you know it's after me richard you know sitting in a train on chain cross yeah, station yeah sylvester yeah yeah just after a meeting it's yeah. just strange i don't know but it can happen in a meeting as well and the other thing that does happen in a meeting is a lot of laughter okay. huge amount of yeah. laughter yeah about in a way about how strange this is now People laugh at themselves, chasing around for years, meditating and opening their chakras and forgiving their mother. <laughs> you know, it's sort of suddenly yeah. the funny side of that. Is yeah, well, it's almost like an apprenticeship in some ways for a lot of people. They kind of try. It's kind of you try all these things and you you find it doesn't work, but somehow you need to try it. I don't know that. It certainly is what happens. I don't think anybody needs anything uh, in, in in another sense, but that is what seems to happen. Mind you, I have to say that, uh, that I know, uh, and maybe you do, but there are other people who never seek, and this happens to. Yeah. Just, you know, they've never, can't even spell the word enlightenment and suddenly... Yeah, yeah well, we were talking about this before we started, yeah. this guy, John Ray Lewis, who is a English guy, He's, he, he died recently, and he was living in Australia, mm. and he did some research, something happened with him, he wasn't a seeker, and he, he um, basically took a poison suite on a bus yeah, in Thailand. Right, yeah. he, he went unconscious, was taken to hospital, almost died, but not quite. Mm. And when he woke up, mm. it's whatever had happened, yeah. and his life was completely different. Mm. And he did some research. I, I was reading on the, the web that he did some research, and he was looking for similar people who he thought were in a same mm. thing happened, or similar thing happened to, the, 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 happened to him. And he found that 75% of the people he found had done nothing like he hadn't before. Yeah. It just happened. Yeah. We had a publican friend in Ireland, we go to Dublin, who, I mean, had no more interest in this than flying in the air. And he was walking along one day and suddenly the whole thing was over. And it was, there was, he vanished yeah. and there was just everything. Yeah. And he got in touch with a doctor who said to him, oh, that's Buddhism. <laughs> And he went to... Really? The doctor said that? Yeah, well, it's quite sweet yeah, in a way, because yeah, that yeah. was the nearest he could get to yeah. it. And then he went to a Buddhist meeting, no, this isn't it. He went to a few others. Yeah. And it just so happened that he heard about me being in Dublin. He came in the audience, sat down in the audience, and that, he said, that's it. Yeah. Bang. But he had no interest in it. You know, the, these kind of things on a personal really fascinate me. And uh, one of the last interviews I did a few day days ago uh, for Conscious TV was a guy called Benjamin Zephaniah. Right. Now, he's basically, you'd call him, he's a Rastafarian poet, kind of a punk poet. And I met him, actually, in a... We're both involved with an organisation called the Prison Phoenix Trust, which, which helps um, supply teachers of yoga and meditation to prisons, yeah. and he's one of their patrons. And uh, he was telling me his life story, and he was saying... Basically, he was brought up in, in, in Birmingham. You know, he was in a gang. He got to the point he was sleeping with a gun underneath his pillow at night. And then one morning he woke up and said, he just got, I had a realisation, if I do this for one more day, I'm either going to be dead or in prison. He'd mm. been in prison once, in mm. prison again. Mm. So he just left everything and mm. went to London mm. and, and made a living out of his poetry. And I, I don't think you necessarily say there was no one there or realisation, so, but it was a kind of realisation. Yeah. And it just happened like that. He woke up, his whole life changed. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that for me is just... OK, as far just, as I'm concerned, he didn't, you know, it wasn't him having the realisation, the realisation happened. I think so you're it's absolutely just a right. It's just, yeah. yeah, that's right. It's not necessarily the, the level of oneness, but yeah. something significant happened, yeah. and it happened in a moment. Yeah. Just woke up. Yeah. I'm going to change my life. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, think it, I think more and more that's available to people. And it's, I suppose, in a way, there has to be an element of courage. Am I, is that right? Or am no, I not so, as far as I'm concerned, there, there doesn't have to be anything. There are no happens, circumstances yeah. that bring this about. And there's no state a person has to be in. You know, you can be in a cave in the Himalayas eating rice or lying in the gutter, pissed out of your mind, and this will happen. Yeah. Because it has nothing to do with you. And it's no, 
and there's no going back because it's uh, it's like final. Oh, totally, oh, totally final. Liberation, so-called liberation. There is no such thing, but it's a word we use in uh, in liberation. It is the end of something that was never happening. It's the end of an illusion, and it can't come back because there's nothing it can come back to. It's a, it's the end. Yeah. And it can't be described in in a sense. We were talking about this just before. The, or, or the only way I can describe what this is like is that there's just what's happening. There's no one that anything is happening to. Everybody watching this might be sitting on a chair watching it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But when they watch it, it's possible to suddenly realise that there isn't anybody sitting on a chair. All there is is sitting on a chair. It's as simple as that. It's totally simple. And, and for the individual, it's very frightening. So are you saying there can be anxiety after it happens? Are you talking about an individual who's, who's watching this happen with someone else? Or are you talking about... No, what I'm talking about is the proposal that, the, 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 that liberation is about the absence of the individual. It's the end of individuality. So until it happens, That's frightening. Right. For an individual, the, yeah, of course know, it is. The yeah. idea yeah. of ending their, in a way that everything they think they are is frightening. But the strange thing is that all it is the end of is a total illusion. It's just like a piece of smoke that's there that you really believe in, and then suddenly it's not there. And life just goes on. Life obviously goes on. This thing drives a car and walks in here and talks, you know. Everything goes on in, in, in free fall. It's just total free fall. I think the other thing that's frightening is people believe, it's very sweet, but people actually believe that they are the managing directors of their life and that they control their life. After there is no one, it's realised that there isn't any control. But that's frightening it also. I will lose control. What will happen if I'm not here? Well, what happens is life. <laughs> <laughs> it was always like that. Yeah. So what happens to your personality? Well, as far as the character is concerned, the physiology and the neurology of the, of the actual, you know, char let's call it a character, there's no one in there, the body, the person, that goes on and is now free to even be more of a personality or a character because there's nothing in there, there's nothing in there judging it. There's no little me saying, oh, you shouldn't talk like that or be like that. What we see with people is that they become more so in, in the colour of them, in the taste of them, in the way they speak, in their bodies. You can see it in their bodies, they're totally, you know. But there's no one in there doing that. But the personality is just a programme, basically. That totally, we... it's a programmed... The brain is the most amazing instrument, which actually correlates and works out everything that we are, you and I are now doing, you know. There isn't anybody doing this. The brain is 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 doing this. Well, in other words, in the end, being is simply waving its arms around and appearing to be a person. 